This is your first presentation on sand dunes, and the aims of this presentation are that by the end of it, you should be able to do the following. So we're going to recap what a sand dune is, so you should be able to give a definition. We're going to recap the conditions that are needed to allow a sand dune to develop, and you'll be able to do, uh, list these down. You'll also be able to describe and explain how a sand dune actually forms. You'll learn about how to draw a transect diagram of a sand dune, and you should be able to replicate this. Number five will be your ability to describe um, the environmental characteristics of a sand dune. And the sixth aim of the presentation is for you to be able to define key terms that are associated with the stages of a sand dune's formation. So what follows um, is slides on this information helping you gather the data um, and key terms, etc. that you need. And I will talk you through the tasks that I'd like you to do with each slide. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, starting off with presentation aim number one, and what is a sand dune? So being able to define what they are. So as you can see from the two pictures, sand dunes are small ridges or hills of sand that are found at the top of the beach, and they are above the usual maximum reach of the waves. So this is the dry area, they're not inundated with water on a regular basis. They form from wind-blown sand that gets deposited against some obstruction, such as a bush, a piece of driftwood, or a rock. Please make sure that you have this definition in your notes in entirety. Number two, what are the conditions needed for a sand dune to develop? Okay, so this is the recipe for sand dunes formation. You may already have these in your notes, but just make sure that you have all these key five points. Firstly, deposition must occur more quickly than the material is eroded, so that material can actually build up. The second point is that there must be a plentiful supply of sand transported, transported to the beach from longshore drift. Hence my little diagram to help you remember. Point C, so the third condition, there must be a large range between the low and high tide so that when the tide goes out, a large area of land is exposed and able to dry out and then the water, uh, so the wind can then blow over and pick up the sediment. Fourth factor is that there must be strong winds to transport the sand particles through the process of saltation. This is bouncing, shown by my tigger. He likes to bounce. So you get a particle of sand, another and it's going to bounce, and then it's going to bounce again until you get a piece of debris on the beach, and then it's going to bounce behind it and it's going to collect. Okay. So point four is that you must have strong winds blowing to allow the materials to be picked up and bounced along until they find an obstacle that's going to stop them. That links into our fifth um, condition needed. There must be a piece of debris. Okay, so this can be a piece of driftwood, it could be a coke can, um, it could be a rock, but there must be something on the beach that the pebble, uh, pebbles and sand grains can collect behind. Okay, that's your recipe for a sand tune. Make sure that you have these five main conditions in your notes. And if you want to, draw yourself a little ticket to remind yourself about the process of saltation. The third aim of this presentation is for you to be actually able to describe and explain how a sand dune forms. Now I've simplified this into six stages. It will make more sense once we've done the transect, um, but for the moment, just so you understand what the transect actually is, I just want to go through these stages with you. Um, listen to what I talk you through and then stop the actual video and then record these stages as a flow diagram into your notes. So, stage one. The wind moves sand that has been dried out at low tide inland by saltation. So that's that bum bouncing action. So it's moving it inland, wind's blowing by saltation. And it's been dried out because the tide has gone out, exposing that area of sand on the beach. So it's been able to dry out and then be transported inland by saltation. Stage two, an obstacle such as driftwood, a can, a rock, stops saltation okay so rather than the particles just bouncing inland forever the obstacle stops them and it causes the materials to build up okay so you start to get a small mound of sand stage three pioneer plants a key term to learn here these are the first plants to grow in any area so like pioneers discovering new um, countries of the world in this case it's plants, they're the first ones to grow in an area 
and they can cope with these harsh conditions. What I mean by harsh conditions, it's salty, there's not very much water, it's very windy. So really not that great conditions for every type of plant to grow. So these pioneer plants have to be quite strong, hardy plants. And they begin to colonise the area, so grow on the area, it's just a posh word for growing. And they form what is called the embryo dune. An embryo dune is the baby dune. Okay, so embryo is in kind of pregnancy, so it's the baby dune. It's the first dune in the stage. Stage four. Okay, the embryo dune has developed, and then you get this whole sequence developing. So another dune forms on the seaward side of the original dune. And this provides shelter to the original dune and changes the environment. So we're building out towards the sea. Okay, so you get the embryo dune, then you get a dune forming in front of that and a dune forming in front of that. Stage 5, we're now starting to get a whole sequence of dunes, so more than one. And the oldest will be inland, so closest to um, the land rather than close to the sea. And as a result of this change over time, we get different environmental conditions. By environmental conditions, I mean different types of soil, nutrients, water um, and salt content. Okay, so environmental conditions are talking about the actual area and how the plants are going to adapt to it. And this leads to a change in the vegetation, which, um, again, we'll talk about this in the next slide. Stage 6, because of these changes, how we've moved up through the stages 1 to 5, the number and types, also known as diversity, of plant species on the dune has increased over time. Very few in the embryo dune, and as we've moved backwards, we've got greater species diversity until we get to what is called the climax community. And this is trees. Okay, so usually um, fir trees or maybe ash or, or birch trees. Okay, so it's some kind of tree is the climax community. That's our last point. So make sure that you've understood what I've taught you through. Replay this section if you need to, but in your notes, you should have these five, six stages as a flow diagram under the heading explanation of how a sand dune forms. Aim four of this presentation is for you to be able to draw a fully labelled transect of a sand dune. Another word for a transect is a cross section and what you can see from the diagram presented here is that I've taken a slice through the coastline and well, profile through the coastline and we've drawn a diagram showing you how the ridges or sand dunes change with distance from the sea. So here is the sea and this is our baby dune, so stage one. Okay, so a little bit of driftwood's been on there, it's trapped some sediment, it's built up. Over time, that sediment is going to build up and you start to get what's called a four dune. So this is the second stage. So this is number one, this is number two. And the four dune starting to get a little bit of vegetation, as you can see there. And the vegetation is going to be a particular species called marum grass. Okay, so we'll talk a bit more about that in your next lesson. But marum grass, spelt like so. M A R R A M and then grass. As that vegetation grows, it starts to binding the soil. And so it starts to rising height. And here we get the yellow dune. Called yellow dune because you can actually see some of the sand still. Okay, so you can still got patches of yellow, so it's called yellow. We're starting to get more, um, sorry, greater in height and more stable, so the vegetation is going to stop that sand moving around. Then what we've got is the grey dune. The grey dune, nice and simple, it starts to look grey. Every little space on this ridge is covered in lichens and grass. So there is no yellow ava um, available to the visible eye. Okay, so it's all, all covered. What you will notice then is that I've got a line going along here called the water table. Okay, so the water table is at depth below us. So anywhere you stand, there'll be water deep within the rocks. Now occasionally, this water, such as here, will come to the surface. So where the land dips in, the water will come to the surface, and here you've got a lake, this little, it's not a lake, it's not big enough to be a lake, a pond, and we call this a dune slack, so a slack of water. This is fresh water, okay, so fresh water.
And that's quite important because the type of plants you're going to get are going to be freshwater aquatic plants. Whereas down here, this is salt, this is the sea. Okay. And then finally, we have our last stage, which is our June heath, or our mature June, or our climax community. Okay, so our last stage. So the soil has changed, vegetation characters have changed, so we've got some trees. Okay, so what you need to be able to do is draw a diagram of these changes. Okay, so go back to the beginning of this section, removing my comments, and draw yourself a cross section, a fully labelled cross section. And obviously, every good diagram has a title, and your title will be a transect. Oh, it helps if I can spell. A transect of a sand dune. Okay, and that goes on the top. Okay, so please do that now. You now have drawn yourself a cross-sectional diagram of a sand dune. What I've got here for you are some photographs of these different zones, so you can see for yourself what they look like. Unfortunately, I cannot take you to a sand dune. Um, it's not in the budget or the time scale that we've got, so we're going to have to do, make do with a virtual um, kind of tour of a sand dune. So I'm going to start again at the embryo dune. So the embryo dune is here. Okay, and you can see that there's lots of sand and there's this little tiny plant here called sea couch. It is salt tolerant, it can cope with the windy conditions and it does not need much water. As you can see though, there's very few of them. So this is a pioneer plant. I've then got my forging. You can see that we've got more sand and you're starting to get this grass here. This is called marum grass. Okay, I mentioned before. Okay. We're going to talk more about this in a future lesson about how it's adapted, but it's a very sturdy grass. It can be totally covered in sand and it doesn't need much water to survive. Following on, we have then got the yellow joint. Sorry, the yellow dune. So on this picture, you've got three areas. I'm just picking out the one in the background. So you can see there you've got quite a bit of grass but also you've got some yellow areas exposed. We've then got our grey dune. See what I mean about the colour? You've got these tufts of this kind of grey, dull grass, and then on the floor, in between, you've got these lichen, okay, which have this grey, kind of yellowy texture. So we call it a grey dune overall. The dune slack, as you can see, this little area where water has come to the surface, and they can be tiny, they can be larger, but they can be quite small, but usually they're going to have bulrushes and reeds in them, and that's normally where we find the ducks. And then we get to our last stage. So this is June heath, so quite low-lying grass um, and a heathland, okay? but if it does progress further from this, we can get trees, such as the trees in the background here, and that's called our climax. Often, humans don't allow the trees to grow because we're using the area for heath or farming, we might be grazing. So climates community can sometimes be hindered. Okay, so just make sure that you can recognise these pictures for the zones that they go in. So that next lesson, when you're presented with them and quizzed on which one goes where, you know which one does go with which stage. Aim number five for this presentation is for you to be able to describe the environmental characteristics of a sand dune. This language I'm using is quite important. It'd be what the examiner uses. So environmental characteristics. So the environment, all about the landscape, the characters of the landscape. Characteristics, another word for feature. So I've given you a little bit more in-depth cross-section here. And you'll notice there's a couple of things on it. So we've got X to Y, so we've got our cross-section. We've got pioneer species. And we have an arrow showing pH decreasing, soil organic matter increasing. Soil organic matter refers to nutrients. We have the water table and you've got your stages shown. Um, what you need to be able to do is to describe how the characteristics, such as whether it's acid or alkaline, the amount of nutrients in the soil, whether it's salty um, and how movable the sand is, um, you have to be able to describe that from its distance from the sea inwards. So I've got a number of statements in red on this page and I'd like you to copy these out and only include the correct words in them. So for example, as you move inland from the sea, the pH of the soil 
decreases. This means the soil becomes more acidic. Uh, sorry, yeah, more acidic. Okay, so as you move inland from the sea, the pH of the soil decreases. This means the soil becomes more acidic. So you would copy that sentence down. Where I'm getting my answers from is the diagram. Okay, so then as you move inland from the sea, the salt content of the soil decreases. The further you are away from the sea, the less salt there will be. As you move inland from the sea, the amount of nutrients, so phosphorus and nitrogen, in the soil increases because at each stage you've got some vegetation that's going to be dying, releasing acid into the soil, and that's going to be adding nutrients. Okay. As you move in um, from the sea, the dunes become less or more mobile. They become less mobile because the vegetation is going to bind the sand and stop it from moving around so much. Make sure that you have these four sentences correctly completed and written in your book. These four sentences are describing the environmental characteristics of a sand dune and they must be learned because this links to why certain plants grow where they do, why certain animals actually inhabit these areas. And finally, number six, you need to be able to define key terms associated with the stages of sand dune formation. So what you have here is a table of key terms that I have taught you through in this presentation, and it's a summary of them. You need to print this out from Edmodo and add it into your exercise books. It is a glossary, it is important, you need to learn these. Okay, so on Edmodo, you will find a copy of these, print them out, stick them in your book and learn them. You will be tested on this information next lesson and each of these are two mark definition questions. Some have more information than is needed to get two marks, but you need to learn all of this. Okay, do it whatever way you like, make little note cards, etc. Test yourself, record yourself doing it, but you will be required to tell me in the lesson what these individual terms mean. If you get them wrong, I will not be best pleased. Okay, so that completes your presentation. So this brings our presentation full circle, and you should be able to do the following. You should be able to tell me what a sand dune is. Number two, tell me how... The, what conditions are needed to allow a sand dune to develop so basically the recipe for a sand dune's formation number three be able to tell me and explain how a sand dune actually forms number four to be able to draw a transect diagram of a sand dune and have done this in your book number five to be able to tell me the environmental characteristics of a sand dune and number six to be able to define key terms associated with the stage of sand dune's formation i look forward to seeing you in the lesson and discussing the next stage of sand dunes case study with you